Hey folks, welcome to this wee video that I was going to make just showing you how I'm going to fit and wire in um, two five and a half inch um, fog lights and two five and a half spotlights or dri driving lights um, as they're called. So this first bit I'm just going to concentrate on the driving lamps, um, get them working then I'll the, do the fog lights later part of the video. Um, because they'll be a little bit more complicated. So with the, with the spotlights, um, with all four actually, I've, I've, I've purchased these um, Y-Pack um, classic style five and a half inch chrome driving lamps. Um, same manufacturer and style of fog lamp, same size. That's those ones there. Um, and the four brackets to mount them that look a little bit like this. Um, first step was to remove the front bumper, which was nice and easy. Three bolts from the underside of the bumper, uh, one at each corner, one in the middle, just under under the number plate here, um, and the bumper lift away. Next was the grill. Again, pretty straightforward, just some Phillips screws, um, quite a few of them actually, and um, right about here to remove that, which gives us access. Um, the mountain bracket fits on here as so, pretty pretty self-explanatory. There's actually two pre-drilled holes, um, one here, one there. I reckon this is probably the hole that's supposed to be for, for the driving lamps. Um, if you were just fitting two driving lamps, I think that would probably look a little bit better. Because I'm going to put two fog lamps in the middle, I've gone for the outer holes, which are slightly bigger. Um, that'll be fine once they're, they're tightened, that won't be a problem. Um, I think it just spaces it out a little bit better looking at some of the photos on on the net. Um, I, I reckon that that's going to look better to, using the hole that more or less a, a aligns with the um, toe and eye as opposed to being in towards the, the end of the number plate. Um, so I've marked out here where I think I'm going to go for my holes. With the fog lights, these are not pre-drilled pre so they, these need to be drilled. Um, and the bracket will secure, so it needs a, an additional hole in here as well. But obviously make sure you know where you want to put it before you start drilling in your body work. Um, regards wiring up the relay, so um, I've removed the front headlight. Um, I wanted to work out what, obviously I want these to come on when I'm on main beams or not depth, not side lights, because that'll bl blind everybody on the road to come towards you. So it only needs to come on when you're on the sort of main full beam. Um, so taking the headlight out, I've started, well no I haven't, I've put on the ignition, Put on dipped beam, checked with a multimeter, um, using um, I don't know if you don't know how to work, work a multimeter, but set it to the twenty volt um, setting, black on an earth, red into the back of here to work out what wire does what. Um, what I found is the blue and red wire um, is for the dipped beam, and the blue and white wire uh, goes live when you've got the main beam in. So effectively, that's what I want to use as my trigger to turn these on. I then trace the wires back and find that they sit underneath the front of the sort of slam panel here. Um, there's sort of metal clips that hold these in place and it runs from sort of one headlight one side to the other headlight at the other side. So what I've done is I've un, un um, wound some of the, the shield, the sort of insulation tape, which to be honest, been a pretty bad state anyway. Um, to reveal the wires and like I say it was blue and white blue and white's there so that's what I need to tie um, to tie into to the relay to trigger it um, you could be really crude and, and tie both lights direct into this wire it would be a, a live but it's not the correct way to do it because um, you don't know what um, capacity is left on this cable for um, for for amps, so if you put these light you put these lights onto the same feed, you may exceed um, the ampage and burn the cables, blow a fuse, etc. So it should be done through a, a separate feed off a relay triggered by that. Um, I'm going to use so to that point, that's going to be my trigger. That would go to pin eighty six on the relay. Um, so yeah, 86 is the 
is a trigger. Um, pin 30 would normally go to the battery or your positive source. For that, I'm going to use the um, front of the starter motor. Um, that's obviously a thick cable that runs all the way back to the battery anyway, so um, I'm hoping to just take this nut off, put on a put on a, a, an end on the cable and, and use that as my clean source. So that would go to pin 30 on my relay, um, which leaves two other pins on the relay. Pin 87, which goes to earth. I haven't 100% decided where I'm mounting it yet, but I'm thinking probably in this left hand inner wing here. Um, and if I do, there's quite a juicy looking, I don't know if you can see that in there, quite a juicy looking earth there um, on the horn bracket. Um, so I could probably tie into that for my earth. Um, and then the last pin on the relay is 87, which would go to the two headlights, the two, sorry, spotlights that we've just added. So those, those two would be tied together, they come with tiny little tails, and they would go up um, spot 87. So that's how I um, plan to do it. I've got... Um, I did buy the, the Spotlight wiring cut kit, the universal wiring kit here. Um, it's pretty rubbish to be honest. Um, horrible nasty switch. One thing of cables. Um, doesn't actually come with um, like a, a block like that for... Um, for um, where's the end of it? There we go. For the, the relay to sit in. It's just got kind of bare terminals. So um, I, I prefer using these. They're pre-wired. Um, and then you can just crimp your kind of wiring onto them um, or solder them, whatever you want to do. Um, Pre-wired, this one's got a, this one secures as well. It's got a bit of a, a mountain hole as well. So screw into that. And I've also um, bought another really um, a fused one because you need to put a fuse in here. You need to put a fuse between your, um, between your live, well, on your live um, feed basically. So it, it becomes a little bit, um, clunky if you use inline fuses or whatever so um, a fuse relay deals with that problem as well so that's that's basically it um, I've drawn it up on the board here just for just to explain it a little bit better for anybody who doesn't really understand how it really works but essentially um, these are the, the the pin numbers and when um, when your switch controls so in this case it's the, the high beam on the thing when that and the earth um, connect it connects these two pins together which is our feed coming in from the battery through the relay back out to whatever it is whether it's a fuel pump or in this case um spotlights and um, that's a bit of a better diagram there so we've got the uh, battery or i'm actually taking it from the starter motor into pin 30 needs to be fused but i've got a fused relay pin 85 out to earth pin 87 out to your new um spotlights and pin 86 to your um, feed, which in my case is the, forget now, what was it again? The um, white and blue wire, which I think probably differs from mini model to mini model, depending on the age. You'll need to work that out yourself. Um, but um, yeah, that's how I'm going to do it. So I'll um, come back on in a few minutes, uh, well, not a few minutes, but once I've uh, wired it up and, and got it work, I'll, I'll come back on and let you know if there's anything that I've done differently to what I just explained there. Thanks. Okay, welcome back. So I now have them wired up and working. Um, didn't really deviate too much from, or at all really, from a wiring point of view from what I said. Um, tied in the starter for my feed, tied in this blue and white wire um, for the sort of signal in, onto the earth, onto the horn for the earth. Got it mounted in here. It was a little bit difficult to actually get a screw through the inner wing because there's not a lot of room here for a drill. Um, and yeah, and then got my feed down um, to my two spotlights. Um, that all worked fine. I hadn't actually tightened the brackets. I mean, when I did test it for the first time, one came on, one didn't, because these are earth through the brackets. So um, yeah, something to look out for if you're if you're like me and you've kind of mocked it up. Um, what I did find, what I probably have run into, is that this, the original brackets that I got, these sort of aftermarket brackets, um, would work fine in the original in, in, in the inner position that i spoke about in the last video uh, you'd be able to drill through here and, and get your hand underneath to secure a bolt however if you put them to the outer position which is the position i want to use you can't get in behind here there's not there's not room on either side to do that had a look online and the original genuine rover brackets 
or a different design and as you can see they're offset so they allow you to go to the outside hole uh, like so um, but they allow, to, allow you to secure it here rather than behind the bracket which gets around the problem of not being able to get your fingers in so ordered these 30 pounds um, which is a bit frustrating, frustrating when I'd already bought brackets um, next problem I've got is they don't fit the aftermarket lights so for starters the hole size is different but I could drill out that if these match but you'll see you know it's a long way off in fact the, the lugs are more or less the same dimension so they don't really they don't really work I couldn't so I think what I'm gonna have to do is cut off this mountain brackets these lugs at both sides and probably drill out this hole slightly bigger and use the um, this bracket and bolt that onto the top of the black one um, so that this is the bracket that always came with with these so um, I think that's going to be Maisie's way just buff this off um, and um, yeah fit that on top so that I can fit these under aftermarket brackets I think these silver ones are still be okay for the, the fog lights um, I think they're totally fine there's the same sort of height so I don't think it'll really matter um, but yeah something to look out for if if I, yeah if I'd taken them to the inside hole it would have been fine but um so yeah, I need to go modify this bracket, get them bolted up, um, get a proper good earth, and then we should be good. The wiring's a bit of a mess at the moment, but um, that's because I want to wire down the fog lights, get them working first, and then what I'll probably do is pull out as much of this wiring as I can and, and wrap it up in insulation tape into sort of a, a loom so, so that they're all together rather than being a bit loose. You might see here that this is ridiculously long. I just... I just want to get mocked up first with plenty of length. Um, I'm going to have to run another live off of here for um, for the fogs anyway, so make sure they're both the same length and, and neat at that point. Um, but yeah, more or less roughed in. Um, so let me fix the brackets and then I'll come back and we'll start the fog lights. So me again, I've cut off the lugs. I'm going to put the bolt through. The new, well, the original bracket for the, for the spotlight. To find, I can't get the bolt through because it hits against the shape of the bracket. And even if I cut it so that it'll go hem, I ain't going to get a nut in there in a hurry. So, I think I'm going to have to weld it. I think I'm going to have to try welding this bracket onto the black one. See what happens. Right folks, well done done. Run a bead along the back. Two beads along each side of the underside. Left the front kind of exposed, just thought it would look a bit neater since my welding's a bit hurt miss. Um tried it on the car. Looks alright, put the bumper on. It's gonna fit fine. Um so I just need to take the light back off and then I need to paint this. This was a nice powder coated, but I've had to obviously buff it, um, not only cutting off the lugs which le left a little bit of exposed metal but now I've had to, to buff it to weld so um, yeah repeat on the other side, do exactly the same for the other side give them a lick of black paint I'm going to paint right up up to the bracket, take the light off again paint the black the bracket black and uh, just have the light chrome, I think that'll look quite good and hopefully very soon I'll be able to mount them for the final time Okay, so a bit of an update after 
putting the back the light back in and starting to think about how I'd run a switch for the front fogs. I've decided I'm not gonna bother. Um what I'm gonna do instead is buy another two driving lamps and pop them in the middle instead and just run them off the same relay. Um so instead of the relay powering two lights, I'll power four. It'll give me the aesthetic look that I was looking for without the hassle of having to run wires into the into the cabin but but more than that it's it's i want to try and make the inside of the car remain kind of looking at oem um and i can't really see a switch um to do that my my plan was that i was going to remove the the brake test switch which never really gets used um and pop in a front front fog switch in there instead um however the the one that's that's arrived in the post which is apparently all you can get now it doesn't quite match the shape it's uh, it would fit in the hole um but it's sort of a bit more modern kind of switch it's it's a bit rounded corners rather than sort of a square edge on it um so i think the combination of the switch not looking quite quite aesthetically right quite a lot of hassle running a separate relay um through the bulkhead with the wire in and, and down the front fog lights when actually i could just add two more um driving lights and, and come off the same same uh, feed that we've just done. I think that's going to be a lot easier. So that's that's what we're going to do instead. Um, so I'm going to order another two lights. Um, but yeah, if you did if you did want to wire some fog lights, the, the relay would be well, another relay very similar to what we did before. So um, 85 would go to your earth, 30 to your battery, 87 would go to the two fog lights, and 86 instead of coming off the high beam, this would have to come, you'd have to put a switch in here instead um, that would be in the dashboard and the switch would need its feed from um, main beam um, like a, 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 some sort of, you'd have to pick up a live from the main beam switch um, because you're not allowed to operate um, fog lights without your um, main lights being on so if, you, if that was just a, a normal live then you'd be able to uh, switch these fogs on independent of the of the normal driving lights. So you would need to take it in from the driving lights switch there. But um, yeah, not gonna bother.